Hello, this is Python and Excel 19.2. Following on from last time, we'll dive deeper into the irrigation data set. This time we need to write something that will collapse the headers into a single row per table. We'll also need to start working on the main data for each table. So let's get stuck in. The first thing we need to do is create a function to extract and collapse headers for each table. So let's define that function called getTableHeaders. It'll take one argument called df, which will be a data frame, and we'll add a type hint to the function saying we expect it to return a data frame as well. We'll add a quick doc string to explain what the function does, that's just good manners. The first thing we need to do is find the rows marked with an h, so filter df where column index 1 is equal to h. That'll get us several rows per table. Some of those rows will be entirely blank. That's of no use to man nor beast, so to get rid of the blank rows we'll use headerrows.iloc to locate all rows and columns from index 2 onwards, which excludes the column that contains the table number and the column that contains the row type. Those columns are never blank. We use drop na with how equals all to drop rows where every column is not a number. It's really important to use how equals all because if you don't, drop na will drop rows with any not a number values, even if some of the other columns have data in them. Next, we need to collapse each column into a single value so we have a single header row for each table. So let's use apply with a lambda function with argument c for column and then use a space string with the join method. This works a lot like Excel's text join function, to be honest. Inside there, we'll put c, which is the column, dot drop na to get rid of any na values in that column. Then as type str to ensure that every value we're trying to join has been converted to a string. It won't work otherwise. That'll give us a single row of headers. Let's create a way to check this function. We'll call it check result and then pandas concat to stack the non-blank rows on top of the single row. Single row is a series, so we need to convert it to a data frame first with two frame. That gives us a data frame with one column, which we then need to transpose with dot t, giving us a data frame with one row. Then we'll return check result. To test this, we'll just pass the first group from the df tables group by into the function. Okay, good. It looks like the three non-blank header rows have been successfully concatenated into a single header row at the bottom there. We don't actually want that as the result of the function, so let's change the result value to be the transposed single row and comment out the check result so it's not running unnecessarily. Good. Let's put that back to display the Python object and move on. Now we've got a function, we can apply it to all the tables. We'll call it df headers and apply the get table headers function to the df tables group by object. Well, it looks like that was a success. We've got a single row of headers for all the tables. Let's put that back as a Python object as well. What's next? The u rows. Remember this document from last time? It said there might be rows for unit definition. Well, just because it lists them here, it doesn't mean they're actually in the data. So before we rush off building a function to deal with them, we should check if we actually need to do it. So filter df where column index 1 is equal to u and get the shape. Might help if that were actually a Python cell. And I've got an error there because there's no such data frame. That should be a df raw. Change that quickly, hope no one notices. We get a tuple, and it looks like we have zero rows and 18 columns, which means we don't have to worry about it, which is nice. I've realized that we're using the same filtering over and over again to get different row types. So over on the import sheet, create a function called get row type. It'll take a data frame called df and a string called row type, and it'll return a data frame. The function is just one line which filters column index 1 for whatever row type is provided and returns the filtered data frame. OK, now we've got that, we can go back over the other code and put the function where it belongs in all these different spots. Now we've done that, we can grab the data rows. So let's create a function called getTableData. And to begin with, we'll just return the rows of type D. Test it with group 2. Okay, let's take a look at this. All right, it seems we've got a couple of subheadings here. One's called 2018 data, has a bunch of states under it. And there's another here called water resources regions, which has some other kind of geographic entity. So I guess we really should check whether those subheadings are present in every table or not. So let's put that back as a data frame. And down here, let's get all the D rows then filter the D rows for column index 2 equal to either of those two values. 
then use value counts to get a frequency table. Okay, here I've missed an opening bracket. Easy enough to do, easy enough to fix. This tells us there are 209 tables with the Water Resources Region subheading and 143 tables with the 2018 Data subheading and apparently two tables with no subheadings at all. Well, there are many more tables than all of those numbers, so I'm going to say that's inconclusive. Okay, we've got table numbers in column 0 of D rows and in column 0 of filtered. So let's convert both of these columns to sets. That will effectively remove duplicates. We can then take the set difference and find out which table numbers are in D rows and not in the filtered data frame. Note that this set difference operation gives us a set. But when we try to display it in the cell, it gives us NA. Anyway, let's convert it to a list since we know that will work. It looks like we've got six tables that have neither type of subheading. All right, there's never really a good place to stop with this kind of project, but sometimes you really have to take a break. So that's it for today. I'll continue with this exploration and clean up in the coming days. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate your support. Don't forget to practice, have fun, and have a great day.